Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava, and this is Speedplay Greece in Victoria 2, number 6. We left off having secured Iraq from the Ottomans, and at this point, we have taken control over a decent portion of Africa. We just have a small number of colonies to create, and we'll basically be done with that, other than the parts where we're conquering them actively from other countries. And we are moments away from declaring war against the Ottoman Empire, which recently just had a revolution, turning their presidential dictator into an absolute monarch, which is a kind of odd thing to be enacted by popular revolt, but that's just the systems in Victoria, too. Now, on the plus side, despite their more, um, let's just say, despite their more stable government, they no longer have any alliances or good relations with any other great powers, or powers whatsoever, and we just finished fabricating a Cassus Belly to take one of their states, which we'll use to take Kanya, and then we'll also take over Thrace and Istanbul. So let's go ahead and acquire state, going after Kanya for 33 war score, and we're just going to rush in, they have anarcho-liberals trying to take over their countryside right now, we're just going to plow through them as though they don't matter, because really they're not anything to concern ourselves over. And we'll just rush on in. I don't even think they have a military right now. They actually have 22 brigades, so they have a considerable force somewhere in their empire. They're now mobilizing as well, which will just make them even more difficult to fight, although I don't really foresee very much in the way of danger to our forces. So we're just plowing in, and hopefully this will work out fairly well. The Ottomans, as you can tell by just their complete lack of forces anywhere, are just in an apparent de decline. And we can actually probably just roll in and smash that one group and take over their occupation. Ah, uh, they actually retreated from it. Looks like Pandemic Influenza is going to take quite a bit of our money away from us. Which is less than ideal. Then again, I guess so is Pandemic Influenza. It just generally... And in fact, we're going to just try to break through their armies as quickly as we possibly can. We'll go rush into Istanbul. Alright, so we'll just clean that army group up as quickly as we can. And it looks like it'll actually be a fairly easy thing to do. We just managed to get Phenomenology, which is a pretty awesome technology and idea generally. Yep. Alright, there we go, we have more forces inbound. Looks like all the battles we're in, we're actually winning pretty much just out loud. Intervening immediately in all these colonial horrors, so, horror sites. And we'll just let that one army go around and do its thing, whatever it is trying to do against us. We do have more reinforcements we can bring up, which we'll do. Now we should probably go stop them from occupying that province. Although, we have a lot of time. It looks like they're not really achieving anything. Alright, and other than that, just occupations, and it looks like it'll be a fairly easy war. Now, we may want to leave some of their anarcho-liberals, although actually we won't. We'll, we'll probably just occupy them until they get another revolt, just to ensure that one will occur and defeat them because we don't really want them to maintain the system of government they have now. That wouldn't really be ideal for us. Uh, just since it's a form of government that could actually uh, conceivably pass reforms, which would mean we wouldn't be guaranteed to see the Ottomans just having rebellion after rebellion as their people get militant and have no outlet for that, uh, which is something that with any of those weird dictatorships they would have ended up having since all of the odd dictator odd dictatorial regimes uh, come with a lot of stipulations about the kind of political reforms you can enact. So if they were to become anarcho-liberals, I'm fairly sure that would mean that they couldn't pass any social reforms, and I'm not sure, but I think it might have also meant that they wouldn't be able to pass political reforms, though that might be wrong. They might be able to do that. Ultimately, I always try to avoid that sort of political system because it it really always just seems to lead to collapse and just government breakdown. I would rather avoid that, typically. Let's go just plow into that our, that navy with our navy and see what happens. I feel like we'll win, even though we're not really well maintained. Hmm. 
Romelia non-Greeks you can crack down on. We'll just bide our time because hopefully our people will turn Greek in... Well, hopefully they'll just turn Greek over time. Alright, and let's take that offering peace. So we'll go ahead and add war, go or war, war goal to acquire Thrace. And it looks like we're not quite there yet. It'll take a while before we have enough war score to actually demand that and have any likelihood of receiving it. But I don't think it's going to take too long, and hopefully we'll manage to just plow our way through. Hopefully we'll catch that one three stack, but I'm not really expecting it. Alright, and we had enough boats that we didn't lose a single one, despite not being... Uh, despite not having any sort of upkeep for our navy, we managed to just destroy theirs. Alright, and fairly soon we'll have the Ottoman Empire entirely occupied, at which point we will just wait until the first revolt they have, and then make peace with them after that. And hopefully it'll be a large enough revolt to overthrow their government. Now, if we're really lucky, maybe the Serbs will get involved and try to get their cores. I don't expect the Montenegrins to do so. Hmm. Alright, well, we'll just let that go on. I'll let these Serbs declare their own war, that way we're not getting in the way of them gathering war score. And when we exit the war, uh, they'll still be part of it. That could fail a little bit in that it might encourage the Ottomans to uh, rebuild their army and then uh, defeat the Serbs, which is possible, but hopefully not the most likely thing. Hopefully not the most likely outcome. If we manage to get them to have a big rebellion, though, before we make peace, Ooh, Poland declared war on Austria. We're going to do that thing we did last episode where we just open it up but don't do anything about it. And that way we get to watch the Austrians basically collapse and decline. I wonder, though. Oh, so the British actually joined, so there's no way. If we were forced to either answer the call or not right now, we would decide not to do that. Uh, just because that's suicide. The British are our main ally, probably our only significant ally in the world. Arguably Spain is significant, but not really. So yeah, we're just not going to fight the British, especially not for Austria, which has a lot of cores that the rest of our allies would probably very much like to have back. And um, upsettingly, our people are becoming less and less militant over time, which means we're not going to be able to pass some of the more odd reforms. In a lot of ways, uh, that could be a positive, but in this campaign, that's really not. Since we were hoping to pass a lot of health care and education reforms, but we're not really passing any reforms this campaign. If we were a more, uh, I suppose, a more industrial and literate culture, we probably would have passed those reforms quite a while ago. Uh, we're just not, however, so... No luck on that front, which is probably holding back our industry quite a bit and slowing down our technology as well. Nevertheless, we are going to keep striving for success, and hopefully we'll pass those reforms in time. You know what we might actually do? Is one cheap, kind of awful little strategy to pass more reforms more quickly would be if we actually allowed our people to vote and then just kept ignoring them. Because every time you um, basically don't follow the whims of the people and you select a ruling party other than the one that they had wanted, every time you do that, it kind of upsets them. Oh, wow, look at that. Austri our Austrian reactionaries all over the empire. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, we might do that just so we can upset our people a bit more and pass reforms more quickly. The one risk to that is that then we'll have to deal with democracy. And I, I don't really want to do that. So we might just accept that we're going to have to deal with a government that isn't quite as responsive as we would like, so that it won't have to be more responsive than we would like. Which is a kind of odd way of phrasing it and looking at it, but that's where we're at. Now we still need to get iron steamers if we're going to build the Suez Canal, which would really help us out to a considerable degree, so we do want to do that at some point. Not right now, though, as we do still have other things that are more pressing. Namely, just increasing our military techs, although really we don't need to do that, as we're not facing any significant opposition at the moment. And we do still have the British as our ally, although that could fall apart at any point if they just determine that they don't like us quite so much. 
And yeah, so I don't know, military techs are probably a safe investment. Alright, and other than that, we're doing very well. Rebels all over the place in a few of these countries, but it doesn't look like any regime is about to be broken by their rebels. And we'll march our forces back over into Asia Minor. Or, well, I guess not into Asia Minor, even. Hyderabad. I'm not really sure where that is, but it sounds... Oh, you like a British puppet, which it is. So we'll just ignore that. We'll move this over there so it isn't really in the way. And another plus about just leaving that in the corner is we will know immediately when their war ends because it'll disappear. Although we will also get a pop-up about it, so it's not as though that's really necessary. Alright, and we'll just move our forces back. Hopefully the Ottomans will face some sort of major rebellion in the next few months. And then we'll make peace with them. And hopefully it's nothing like a jingoistic rebels, or not jingoistic, uh, Jacobin. If it's Jacobins, I forget how they actually say it. Everyone says Jacobin, but I think it's actually Jacobin. We're not going to get too into that, though. Uh, hopefully, though, they have a rebellion that isn't democratic in nature. Hopefully it'll form some sort of weird dictatorship, and then we can just keep doing this later. Looks like somehow we have a lot of colonial power. Uh, just opened up. So we'll go ahead and do more colonialization. Oh, the Ottomans are actually attacking us over here. I didn't actually anticipate that. That also explains where their other army was. Alright, now if we're lucky, the Ottomans will have rebellions kind of like the type the Austrians are just going through all the time. I don't know the likelihood of that. Hopefully it's fairly high. And we'll start pulling our forces all back to Greece proper. Now I'll just speed things up a little bit. So this war is actually going weirdly well for the Austrians, despite the fact that their country is in pretty considerable turmoil. It looks like the British are just... Whatever they're doing with their massive army, it is not really succeeding Alright, and uh, so with that all done, we'll just move our forces over here into Ottoman North Africa. And at this point, we are slowing down our infamy burn by just kind of staying in this war. And that's not really an ideal circumstance for us to be in. But we will try to get them up to full occupation just to kind of break their country a little. And then we'll be in a pretty good spot. Whatever ends up happening other than that. France declared war on Belgium. Well, I wonder what they're after. Wallonie. Well, we're not going to help you, Belgium. I'm sorry. So, yeah, that's less than ideal for the Belgians. Oh, what is this? Bosnian nationalists. Alright, if we can get Bosnia to get their independence, then that would be very nice. Oh, let's get out of here. Ottoman anarcho-liberals. Kind of weird that some of them popped up in the midst of our own country, but, I mean, I guess that's just how it happens. Hopefully, they'll just go around us. And we'll try to get out of their way. Alright, good old... Anarcho-liberals just popping up all over the place. Albanian nationalists as well. They're in very small numbers, which is pretty sad, but hopefully they'll still be able to, well, enforce some demands at least. Now it looks like they're being intelligent about where they go. So we'll stay in the war until at least one group of rebels manages to achieve their objectives. We'll just push all those war updates away, and we'll decline their peace offer for now. The Russians want military access from us. I'm not really sure why. Oh, to help Belgium and Portugal. Nah, we're not going to offer them that. Hopefully these British don't kill our 
Oh, Spain broke their alliance with us, which is kinda cool, since we don't really want to be allies with them anyway in the long run. And the British, I guess, are sending their forces all the way around into Russia to fight the Austrians. Montenegro broke their alliance with us, so people are just going to start breaking their alliance. Uh, pretty much just until we make peace. Hopefully that doesn't include the British. The British are our steadfast ally, and if they break that over this war, then that won't really have been worth it, since I'm not really sure how likely it is that we'll be able to get back into an alliance with them in the end of this. So, yeah, who knows? At this point, it might be better to just go ahead and make that peace deal. And we'll actually move these forces back, since that's not really a fighting army. And we also do need to recruit quite a few Dragoons. So we'll recruit six units of Dragoons. Uh, actually, we'll recruit five units of Dragoons. And then the rest will just be infantry and engineers. Uh, just because we do still have this one army, I'm not sure where I put it, I might have actually sent it. Yeah, we have this one army of just artillery. Admittedly, it also has an engineer, but we'll try to just get that army all together and make it more uh, sensibly organized. So we'll actually just run it through and get it to the coast. Alright, so hopefully Bosnia at least will get their independence and we'll just start influencing them. And hopefully Albania as well. It kind of sucks that this is the way that we're going to have to uh, ensure that these people get their independence, but there's really not much else we could really do. And we'll get that unit out of there. Probably just disband that one unit of engineers that isn't really doing anything. We'll keep the unit of infantry, though, because we just kind of need infantry more than anything. Ooh. Cut down to size against Panjab. Friendly with the British, though. That's unfortunate. We'll go ahead and start influencing them, just because we don't want them to fall into the British sphere. Two new protectorates. Alright, and there we go. That'll finish up the conquest or the uh, scramble for Africa. Looks like the British might actually be able to pull off their intervention against the Austrians. And we'll just manage to sit on the Ottomans until their empire falls apart a little bit more. Okay, so the moment the Romanians break their alliance is probably the moment we're going to have to give this up. Just because... I mean, we don't really want to push this so far that the British break their alliance, and I feel like it'll go Romania and then Britain, if we're lucky. Although the British are busy intervening against the Austrians, so I don't think they'll break their alliance. Ew. Alright, well, we're going to have to accept full responsibility for the wrongs committed. The alternative would push us over the infamy limit. So, sorry, Greek Malay. Sorry, we did some horrible, horrible things, evidently. We'll let people become socialist in our core territories, as that'll help us out in some odd and vague ways. And just intervene immediately in all the civil violence. Now, we could possibly get out of this and still have these nationalists win, but I don't really want to don't really want to risk it. Although fairly soon it would make a lot more sense to to just let them go their own way. Oh, what's this? Another wave of Bosnian nationalists. Or no, they just took over a province that they were occupying for some time. All right, and we'll prove that later on. Uh, Belgium, it looks like, was just completely unable to defend themselves. And the Russians are actually also on the side of the French. So it was very good that we didn't join that war. That could have been a disaster. Grievous, grievous insults. We can cut Kiva down to size. Not that we really want to. 
Although we could. We could do that, and we could do it easily. Belgium broke that alliance with us. Alright, so as soon as the Romanians do it, we'll just call it. Just because this war isn't really worth the destruction of our entire alliance system. And really, that'll give the Ottoman anarcho-liberals enough time to take over their capital. And that's really the main thing that we want to push for. Because even if they defeat the rebels after that, it won't really matter since they'll have basically done a pretty damaging blow to the Ottoman state. We'll go ahead and cut funding to our military to a considerable degree. That'll let us get rid of our tariffs. I didn't realize we were allied to the Portuguese, which means I kind of messed up uh, something a little bit earlier. That's odd. I don't remember allying them. But I guess it doesn't really matter all that much. Alright, and we'll just carry this war through until Ankara itself is occupied. That'll be the cutoff point. Albanian nationalists, I hope you guys manage to achieve your ends. I really do. Oh man. Alright, there we go. Scramble for Africa, complete. Now we'll just have to go eat up all of these weird countries, like Sokoto and Ethiopia. Uh, let's actually check. 65% and 60%, so we have some time, but not really all the time in the world. And basically the day these anarcho-liberals take Ankara, we'll go ahead and make peace. And there we go. So, Greece now controls all of these amazing territories, and we have the decision to reform the Byzantine Empire, which we are not going to do, because we're going after a bigger, better empire, which we'll hopefully be able to reform in a little bit. Also, apparently our people are slightly more upset, I guess because we took over Ottoman lands, and they were upset, and we'll use that anger to pass healthcare reform. Montenegro wants to ally us again, so we'll go ahead and treat them to that. Ally the Serbs as well. We managed to keep our Austrian ally, and that's pretty fun. Oh man, they're probably going to break. I really can't predict them doing anything else but just breaking in some awful way. Morocco wants to ally us, and no. <laughs> that's an awful idea. I'm not going to go get into a war to defend some unciv. On the right side, though, it is good that we are getting alliance offers, at least. That does mean that we're doing decently well. We'll go ahead and disband that one infantry unit. Belgian, the Belgians want to ally us again, but I don't really want them as our ally. Then we'll start just transferring troops over and get these two armies into some one single collective army. Actually, we'll transfer them over to Africa, since Africa is probably going to be a site of more conflict in the future than just this area. Maybe not for sure, but definitely for at least a little amount of time. Oh, apparently Italy is a great power, and a considerable one at that. That'll probably lead to violence. Alright, cool, we're getting cores right here already, which is pretty insane. Although I guess there is a considerable Greek population. Not really a high amount, but still a good number. And I really am hoping for these nationalists. Although it does look as though the Ottomans are building up a force. Alright, and we'll push forward uh, to Iron Steamer so we can get that Suez Canal and stop having just such a crazily uh, split apart military. Or, I guess not really military, but a crazily split apart everything, really. Increase these relations. Alright, so, okay, now the Austrians and the British are fighting in the middle of the wastelands of Russia in a war that is really not going in their favor. 
So this is actually kind of impressive how well the Austrians are just smash or just uh, what am I saying? Sapping. There we go. The Austrians are really sapping the strength of the British Empire right now. I would not be terribly surprised to see them in India in a long time. Although they'll probably give up if they keep losing like they are. Alright, we need the research points more than we need the five prestige. Five prestige would be cool, but research points are just amazing. Man, those Bosnian nationalists need to turn around and go attack actual areas in Bosnia. Same thing with the Albanian nationalists. So that is kind of problematic for them both. We can also expand a naval base or two in the regions that we just took over. Apparently the Ottomans have not been doing well enough to maintain naval bases, which isn't really surprising given the state of their nation. So the one reason I would want to turn into the Byzantine Empire would be to drop that tin infamy so we could just go invade Egypt right now. I have a bit of a plot that would combine our territories and do so in a way that's kind of cheeky but would probably work fairly well. It would be a two-part plan and I guess I'll just explain it right now. Is If we go to war to create a puppet, or if we go to war to puppet... Now what is the actual title of it? Well we can't try it on them because they're in our sphere. But, if we go to establish a protectorate in Egypt, which we can't do yet because they have seven provinces and they need to have five or less, I believe. So if we take over these two provinces in Middle and Upper Egypt, we can then demand that they become a protectorate of ours. We could invade them, get it to the point where they're saying, okay, we will become your protectorate, and then declare war on the Ottomans and on the Spanish to liberate country and liberate Egypt. So what we would do is we would push them to the point where they're saying, okay, we will liberate Egypt. Click that so Egypt would get all of these Spanish territories and all of their old cores from the beginning of the game. And then we would click yes to annex them. Doing that would combine our empires, three parts. It would just be very difficult to get to the point where we're able to do that. And we have to do it fairly quickly or we're going to risk that the... We have to do it... Oh, crap. Okay, well, we're now in a war against the UK and all that. Alright, so we managed to end it with a white piece. Please, for the love of God, let them accept us as an ally. Ew. I don't think we can ally them while a crisis is going on. Right. Okay, so it's the North Germans backing Belarus against the British and Russians backing Poland. France, what is France trying to do? Support the UK. Italy will support the UK. We'll also support the UK. No reason to let this go on any longer than it needs to. And we'll go ahead and also increase relations with the Russians, just in case we don't manage to uh, see anything through right at the moment. We really do need to get back into the good graces of the United Kingdom. That's basically the ultimate thing. Exotic fauna. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a Museum of Natural History, because that is pretty cool. Oh, what's this? We can get accept or good health care. That'll really help our population grow. We have a lot of factories, and most of them aren't doing very well. But we do have 40 capitalists now, so that's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and tax rich people less, basically to nothing. How are you doing, capitalists? You're getting your luxury needs met. Good God. That is amazing. Alright, white peace. Please, for the love of God, let the British accept our alliance. They will not accept because of our infamy and too many alliances. Alright, we're going to increase relations with them. We're going to break our alliance with the Portuguese. Sorry, Portuguese. Hmm. We, 
could break our alliance with the Serbs. Oh, we're not even allied to the Serbs. We are allied to Montenegro, though, so we'll just break that. Sorry, Montenegro, but you haven't had an army this whole game. Too many alliances is still minus 20. That might be too many alliances on their end. Also, weirdly enough, we can influence the Ottomans. Although we should have a truce with them. I guess it's because they're, um... No, it's not even because their government collapsed, because their government collapsed earlier. So, that's just kind of weird. Oh, wait, no, we made peace, and then their government immediately collapsed. Oh, man, we really need this, this alliance. We'll increase relations. We'll even fund our army and navy which is going to put a pretty decent dent in our budget surplus but it might also be the thing we need to push things through we could also ally the North German Federation Confederation no actually Federation but I don't want to do that just yet alright so that's problematic Actually, we'll see if it's our, ally our alliances or theirs right now by just kind of testing this. Any minute now. Alright, so here's the way to test it. They're at minus 15 with us right now. Minus 15 still. Alright, so they don't mind our number of alliances. Just their own right now. Now, the North Germans do have a decent number of troops, as much as France and slightly less than Russia. We will proceed to ally them, and they're probably going to immediately declare war on France. I honestly would not be shocked at all if they did that. The Brazilians want an alliance. We'll go ahead and accept that, not even, well, although they can't really do much to help us. It looks like Albania is not going to gain their freedom this time around, which is a little sad. But the Bosniaks are probably going to. So there's some positives to that. And it's time for us to start getting all these various army techs now that we don't really have a great protector state. That is such a shame. Well, now we have too many great power allies, but it shouldn't matter too much. What we might need to do is ensure the collapse of the Austrian Empire, at least to the degree that we can get forces... Hey, look at that. There we go. Civilized nation and a presidential dictatorship. Oh, okay, yeah, because... Oh, that's weird, actually. That's just their own government for whatever reason. But that's very lucky. We'll go ahead and influence them. The Serbs do not want to be our ally because they have too many great power allies because they're allied with Russia. Weird. Oh well, not really a problem I suppose. So I guess in the ideal world, Slovakia would get their independence and then uh, we would be able to get them into our sphere of influence, but that's probably not going to happen too soon. And we only have to wait five more years before the British would conceivably be able to ally us again. Although whether or not they would want to remains to be seen. And will probably remain to be seen for quite some time. Get some penal colonies. Alright, so overall, overall, our country is actually doing fairly well. We'll go ahead and build a better naval base in Athens, and another one just in West Macedonia. That way we'll at least be able to build better naval vessels later on. In fact, we'll build quite a decent number of those. As many as we can afford, really. And we'll just keep that up for a while. Okay, now Russia is probably going to be taking North Korea. Or, for all we know, they might be trying to puppet them entirely. Oh, yes, they are. Just trying to take them over entirely. That's interesting. That'll bring them to war against the Chinese. Chinese want military access. We're going to say no to that. 
it's no real reason to give them anything. And I don't really mind if Russia takes over Korea. Alright, so other than that, we're pretty much just going to have to sit and wait for a little while. It looks like we're actually at a large risk of a crisis forming that just kind of tries to take away some of our lands. By the Portuguese again. Whoops, looks like we let a lot of these troops get damaged. So we'll just disband all those damaged groups. And I'll just split them up throughout Africa. But we will keep them pretty close to Egypt since that's the likely target. And now we'll just create more forces in Africa and throughout the world. as that's pretty much the big thing we need to do at this point is just maintain the size of our army alright hopefully that'll work out decently well Austria declared war on the Italians they're fighting Italy and Spain. I don't really want to get involved in that war, but if we don't, then the Austrians are just going to lose. I'm not going to get involved in that war. Well, let's take a look. Yeah, it's just the Austrians. That's not really a great thing, and we do kind of want their country to break apart anyway. Unless, I guess, we can get them to be our ally in a great war. And I'm fairly sure great wars are going to happen as soon as the opportunity arises. Demand Chinese Manchuria. Oh, so just that one little place. Interesting. Alright, other than that, we're in a fairly good spot. Let's check out our population. Still getting their luxury needs met, which is great news. Hmm. Okay, yeah. The Italians are just winning this outright, which we really just expected them to do anyway. I honestly don't really see the purpose of keeping the Austrians as our ally, other than just to give North German forces a route into our lands. And they won't even do that because, I mean, no one actually directly touches us. Even Serbia hasn't managed to get any of their cores back against the Ottomans, which, I mean, is partially because we haven't helped them at all. What we could do, though, is start influencing them. Looks like the North Germans have already been trying. Which would be interesting, they might be able to form uh, Greater Germany if they form Germany with the Austrians in their sphere. Which is not something I want to have happen whatsoever. Because that would just be fairly insane. Uh, so what we might end up doing is declaring war against the Egyptians. North Germany declared war on France. Who will, the French, who will the French be aided by? By the Russians, of course. Alright, this is kind of the moment of truth. Do we want to fight a great war for no real reason? Or do we want to watch the North Germans break and die? And it would become a great war, but it would lead the Germans to become actual Germany, which would be very helpful for them. Hmm. I'm pretty conflicted about this, honestly. Hmm. This will turn into a great war. 
that, that's really the true, truest statement about it. Whoever wins, it'll be a great war until they win. We're going to have to switch out of this party. And, ooh, this will really not be good for us. Just because it'll also slow down our infamy burn rate. So we won't be able to burn infamy very quickly. And not only that, but uh, it will also lead to a great war. So we're going to go ahead and just let the uh, let the North Germans flounder in this one a little bit. Especially if they lose their initial battles against the French, that would be hopeless anyway. Although it looks like they might be able to pull some of them off. If they can win this, then there's no reason for us not to help them. But if they lose, then there's no reason for us to get involved and just, you know, fall down with them. And the Italians are pressing their advantage against the Austrians, which is not exactly an ideal state of affairs. Hmm. It looks like the Germans might be able to pull this off. And they're fighting on two fronts and doing so... Oh, right, because the Russians are in China! There's still really no reason for us to get involved, but that does make it slightly different. Hmm. We'll go ahead and just keep encouraging craftsmen in our most populous states. So yeah, this is actually imminently achievable. The French have a large force, but it might be in the colonies. The Austrians, on the other hand, definitely cannot pull it off. Oh, wow. So this is actually going very well. This might actually just turn into an out-and-out -out victory. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they just want Alsace-Lorraine. Yeah, I guess there's no reason not to help them. We might lose control over some of our colonial possessions, at least in the short term. But it's not like that's really stopped us from doing anything so far. Hmm. Although they will just win it on their own, so we don't really need to support them in that sense either. Alright, looks like the Russians are out of their Korean War. Now we do have stripey Korea, probably just till the end of time. Who knows, maybe the Germans live and knock the Russians out of the war. Although now the situation is getting a little bit more pear-shaped for them. Aww. Oh. Interesting times. Oh man. There we go! Okay, cool. And now Germany exists. Oh god, German pan-nationalists in the Austrian Empire. Well, that would work out for us somewhat, uh, just in the sense that we do... Uh, whew, we would have a very powerful German ally if they did manage to incorporate the Austrian Empire. Not that that's very likely, but who's to say? Honestly, the rebels will probably just get destroyed. Hmm. Alright, though, that was interesting. We really need to get those army supply techs, just because it's kind of ridiculous how many of our forces are just dying, waiting for them. Let's see. Uh, it's unfortunate about that artillery piece. But besides that one extra engineer, we have a couple decent armies ready to go. Alright, and other than that, everything seems to be going decently well just throughout our empire and the world at large. Looks like we need a lot more artillery and some dragoons. Oh, and there we go, there's some artillery. And some dragoons. 
What a good world we're living in. Alright, so we'll probably just justify our war against the Egyptians right now. They are at 65% of the way to becoming an actual country, and that's a little worrying. We'll go ahead and decrease, let's say, the United Kingdom's relations with them. And there's really no reason to hurry. We'll also decrease the United States' relations to them. Give our people some basic school systems, which we probably should have done a lot earlier. Get that literacy rate up to something less horribly embarrassing. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder what rebels the Italians were fighting that in that moment. Well, we are very lucky to have the Germans as an ally. I'm not sure what they're doing with their military, just pushing it up against Belgian and against the Belgians, but that is somewhat interesting. And they are going to become a very powerful state over time. So it was good that we aligned ourselves with them. Hmm. I don't really want the Italians to get Karen Carnton. Stiermark, just because it'll make the borders really awful. Which would be a pretty bad reason for us to get involved in the war, quite frankly. Alright, does this group need anything? Definitely not an engineer at any rate. Oh, but these groups do, so we'll just send it over to the least manned one. Alright, and it looks as though the Italians are just going to slightly overwhelm the Austrians. Hmm. Oh well. So, yeah, I guess I may as well start justifying our war against Egypt. decrease the American opinion, and then we'll just get started fairly soon. They don't like us whatsoever because we took all of their land, so it's not like we really have to worry about that even. And I'm not really sure what else we need or what we're missing at this point to create the Suez Canal, so let's actually figure that out. Uh, you know, let's just perform a nationalization really quick. Hopefully that won't piss anybody off. Now we need nitroglycerin. Have we not got nitroglycerin? Oh, you know, it's inorganic chemistry. So that's another reason we should have got that earlier. But uh, we're getting it now. We'll remove them from our sphere, and then we'll get ready to just kind of move into them. So some of our armies are fairly undermanned, which is not really the best thing. But it would honestly take quite a bit of work for us to get that all together in a way that's really sensible, and we might not even need to do that in the event of war. Although in the event of war, the big thing is that we're going to have to worry about our naval strength, which is probably not going to be all that great. At least not compared to a real country. So that's going to be a concern to keep on, or in the back of my mind at least. Alright, we'll just demand a concession. Should be quick, should be cheap, should be easy. Hopefully it'll be any or all of those things. And yeah, we'll just see how it all plays out. Looks like we have another engineer, that's convenient. Go slide that into the other army that's missing one. It looks like we could build a considerable force at this point. just around our countryside. We'll build a lot of troops in Africa. We won't build any more of our troops in Europe right now, other than maybe an engineer. Okay, 3.5 infamy. That's not great, but it's also not terrible. And we'll go pluck up some more forces.
in organic chemistry that's very helpful. We'll get early railroads since... Oh, look at that. We've actually managed to build our railroads. Now, we are probably going to have to tax the poor more if we're going to go into war. But I'm willing to do that. And I don't think it'll take more than 10 minutes, so we'll probably see the Egyptian war through. Oh, and look at that. Bam! Suez Canal constructed. So that's very nice. Intervening immediately in all these colonial little struggles, I guess. I'm not really sure what else to call them. Little just attempts at freedom or something. I'm actually pretty proud of how long the Austrians have managed to keep that together. Alright, let's see. We'll go ahead and become liberal for a moment. Tax the poor. Fund our forces. And, uh, yeah, that's basically all of that. We're still making a ton of money, which is great news. We'll probably put that into constructing more naval bases. More and better bases. And we'll just roll on in to take Middle Egypt. Although... Yeah, we'll take Middle Egypt. And we'll just run our armies basically in every direction. I don't think the Egyptians will be able to put up anything like a fight. Although our army is fairly disorganized in that initial battle, so we'll just enforce, reinforce them quite a bit. And then we'll hope for a reactionary rebellion to overthrow the state. Alright, and that's pretty good progress, just immediately. Get some semi automization Now, one downside to this is that the British are probably not going to look too kindly on these actions and are just an accusation of more infamy. Ooh, Austria just got smashed and immediately became Austria-Hungary. So that's a little unfortunate, but we knew it was going to happen for quite some time and chose not to intervene on their behalf. So I am pretty sad that we just ended up inadvertently almost dropping the British... Well, actually, yeah, just completely inadvertently dropping the British as our ally. Uh, oh, and the Austro-Hungarians broke their alliance with us, which is kind of rude, but I guess understandable. And it's probably Egypt offering us peace. I do really hope that they get a rebellion that kind of just overthrows their state. But we do need to let our infamy burn off, so there's no real reason for us to stay in this war. Now I'll just take these forces back. And we'll move more of them into Africa than we had previously, just because that'll probably be a more important uh, area for us to keep control of. Let's decrease these guys' opinion of the UK. We don't really want them in our sphere, we just don't want them to be in the British sphere. Too many great power allies mean they don't like us whatsoever. But we will try to keep relations up. Alright, and we just need to take one more province from the Egyptians, and we will be in a good spot, and we'll hopefully be able to make them into a protectorate and do a whole bunch of other things. It really just depends on how that goes over. Uh, we will give them military access. 
So yeah, the British are definitely going to just keep devouring China, which is not the best thing to happen in the world. It really isn't. That could be very problematic in time. Huh. So yeah, losing them as an ally was not a good trade, although maybe having the Germans will prove to be helpful later on. I'm honestly, that was a really big mistake to just make by accidentally hitting enter too much. Which is really the cause of it, and that doesn't say very many good things. We'll invest in our people's uh, railroad construction. And hopefully the factories will do a decent job. Now, I'm actually hesitant to subsidize all these factories, since it is very likely that uh, doing so will just lead to economic collapse the next time we have to put laissez-faire types in charge. And it looks like the British got another uh, Chinese province, so they're getting really strong, which is not ideal, especially since they're not our ally anymore. Which definitely does say we are going to have to upgrade our naval bases, because if we end up in a position where we have to fight the British Empire in order to stay alive, well, it's our empire first. It'll just be a little unfortunate for it to come to that. And hopefully the Ottomans will be on the opposite side if it does turn into a great war. Plus we can go ahead and drop all of these military funding since we don't really need them anymore. And we're just making so much money from the people in poverty in our country that we can give all of the middle and upper classes tremendous tax breaks. Alright. Maybe the Serbs will ally us now. No. Still allied to the Russians. Who aren't helping them whatsoever to get their cores back, although I guess neither did we earlier. Hmm. So we are kind of tempting fate by having all these people so upset at us. But there's really nothing we can do about that, or at least nothing, nothing we're going to do. And the Ottomans are proving upsettingly stable in the three places they're still in. So yeah, besides the fact that we have to slow down considerably, I think we're doing fairly well. Our population is doing a decent job of just keeping factories going. Making a good number of railroads. We have 151 investors now which is great investors are capitalists. I really do, as like a late game goal, we need to get our empire connected. And we really do need to just kick all these other countries out of Egypt at least, and at least this, part, this portion of Africa. We'll probably go to war against the Egyptians one more time for Upper Egypt and try to do that just quickly. But we'll see how it all plays out. They are westernizing upsettingly quickly. Like one large goal achieved and they might just become western. And that would be no good for anybody. Romanian rebels, not sure what they're after. Bulgarian nationalists. At this point it's probably for the best if we just keep those guys down get some acceptable schools, and we can probably get our illiteracy rate up fairly quickly. Alright, and then in about a year we'll be able to get great wars, which uh, will speed up a lot of things. Unfortunately, the Ottomans will probably never be in a great war against us unless we actually do end up with a crisis war happening in one of our territories that we stole from them. In that case, it might happen fairly quickly. It's kind of a shame that we can't release any of our Chinese possessions, as that would be very nice. Um, hmm. We could just release that and release Johor and get just the territory that we want to have later on, but I actually don't really want to do that. It's really upsetting because we have a very powerful state, we just can't do very much without hitting that infamy cap. 
So we might end up forming Byzantium, and in fact, if you guys say that, we should probably just form the Byzantine Empire and move on from there. I might be very keen on hearing that. Uh, for the meantime, we'll go ahead and put Panjab in our sphere of influence, as well as the Ottomans. Oh, and Bosnia. Hmm. And if we look at great powers, we're getting pretty decent influence in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I wonder if we'll be able to form, I'm not sure if it's a decision that we'll be able to make uh, just in the base game, or if it's something that has to happen in um, mods only, but we might be able to form Yugoslavia if we have everywhere else in our sphere. That might be wrong, though. Apparently no one's built the Panama Canal. Huh. Well, alright. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's just a mod decision. Although, if we get the Austrians in our sphere, then that would be kind of good for us. We already have a large empire in our sphere of influence, and a large empire in general. At any rate, we'll probably leave it right here for right now. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, the fate of Greece got a lot more uh, in question when we lost the British as our ally. Hopefully, though, we'll be able to get them back on our side, and if not, maybe the Russians. Maybe once great wars can break out, we'll have a decent alliance block all our own. That, uh, that remains to be seen, though. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching, and I guess we'll find that out as we play along.